Custom Robo. Like Fire Emblem, it was a game that was basically completely ignored outside Japan, up until a cameo in Smash Bros. brought it out of obscurity and made it a little bit better known. Now this is the original game in the series, as well as the first import N64 game I ever purchased, because the region encoding on the N64 is basically a complete joke. And honestly, I think it'd be pretty hard to top this for a first import. It's pretty damn good. What I can make of this story is you receive a custom Robo Cube for your birthday, a sort of dice that contains a tiny robot that you can completely customize, and then you go fight a bunch of people because plot. Actually, you know what, I take that back. I don't think there's actually all that much plot to this game outside the opening bit where you receive your robot. But still, fight a bunch of people, customize your robot, win. The gameplay itself is rather simple, but works quite well. Essentially, you walk your character around an overworld map until you find a character to challenge. You challenge them to a fight using your customized robot. You beat them, and if you're lucky, you receive a sort of blueprint of a unique part that enemy used. You can then trade this blue part in for the same corresponding part. You can then staple said part to your robot, giving you a better combat advantage over your next opponent. Overall, it's a very nice concept, because while you start out relatively weak and kind of unimpressive, as you slowly build yourself up through the various fights, you become visibly more and more powerful just by all the different weapons you've collected. Another interesting thing to note is not all weapons are straight upgrades. You have four different weapon types, you've got your main shot, you've got a physical attack, as well as bombs and some other type of like missile thing, which are completely weird and you probably won't see me too successful with them, but the idea is that while you can replace each weapon, each one has different attributes, different shot speeds, different homing capabilities, and the thing is, a weaker weapon might be more beneficial in certain fights than another one, just based on your opponent's loadout or your environment. So, while I might be able to get a better, like, secondary missile, or whatever they're called from an enemy, it might not be as effective as the previous one, simply because it has a different homing capability. Although, more often than not, those seem to be mainly just used for distraction more than anything, because those things are awkward as all hell to try and use. But, this customization does come to my biggest and, honestly, only real complaint about Custom Robo. And that is, this game is Custom Robo. You know, it says it in the title. It's a game about customizing robots, and while robot customization is basically in the forefront of gameplay, you can't completely customize your robot. You can change all the different weapons on your robot, however, you are unable to modify your chassis. You're still stuck with the generic main character's hero man robot guy chassis. So if you like the commando character, or you like the bigger looking guys, or like the ninjas or whatever, you can't use them. At least in the story mode, which I think is a massive miss, especially considering that, once again, the title of the game is Custom Robo, Customizing Robots. So, leaving one massive aspect of customization, even if it's just a visual thing, seems like a massive miss on their part. But that said, that's my only complaint about this game. This game is awesome. Running around improving your robot, challenging people to fights, Seeing all the weird and wacky different environments to fight in, it's all just a ton of fun. Speaking of the environments, there's a lot of them. I think I counted something like 30 different fighting arenas, and each one has its own hazards and stage layout, which means that they're all going to feel different. Which is impressive, considering the sheer number of them on a single N64 card. The overall presentation of this game is really solid. It has an interesting contrast of using 2D sprites running around the main overworld as the humanoid characters, but once you sort of morph into your robot characters in the hologram battle arena or whatever it was, it all sort of turns into like 3D polygons and stuff. It was a neat contrast to sort of show the duality of worlds in play, which is something that I can really appreciate. In addition, all the different robots are full of personality, and they complement the characters using them quite well. Each and every individual character's corresponding robot sort of reflects their own personality and tastes, which is something that helps give this world a greater sense of uniqueness to every person, 
One final thing about the visual presentation I really have to commend this game with is that each and every individual weapon part you can equip to your robot has a visible difference to one another. Which means once you've played the game for a little while, at a glance you can kind of figure out which weapons do what. Which can allow you to prepare yourself better against whatever opponent you're facing just by seeing what they're loaded out with before you fight. It also means that once you can understand each weapon at a glance, you'll be able to tell exactly what every weapon will do instead of having to sort of kind of figure out what each of the item descriptions are. So instead you could say, Oh yeah, that's that one gun that has that triple shot I really like. Well, I'll equip that, because that just synergizes well with me. Instead of just sort of having to try every weapon out and hope you kind of remember what each one is. And because of this, that eliminates a massive headache of just trying to figure out what each weapon does through trial and error. Hoping that you just kind of pick the weapon you thought you picked, and that's fantastic and definitely cuts down massively on the region barrier of this game. The audio presentation isn't terribly exciting, but it's not bad either. It's okay. The overall music works for what it needs to do, but honestly, it's not very memorable. Now, as an import, you definitely have to worry about a sort of barrier to entry just in translation and stuff, and with this game, it's honestly not that bad. The only thing you might have trouble with is just figuring out where you need to go during the story mode. And even then, there's a fairly natural progression of where you need to go through the story, so you shouldn't be too lost for too long. Ultimately, even if you can't understand Japanese, I'd say that this game doesn't have too big of a language barrier, but that said, you still will miss out on what little story this game has. Which is, of course, unfortunate, but I think it's a fair trade-off for the gameplay. Now, if you want a copy of Custom Robo, I've got some really good news for you because it's not very expensive, and because the N64 import market seems to be basically untapped, mainly because there aren't a wide variety of imports that are honestly all that noteworthy, it's really easy to get your hands on, and pretty much dirt cheap too. I will honestly dissuade you a little bit from getting this one though, simply because it does have a sequel that does literally everything this game does, except more and better, and it runs a lot smoother. That said, this game is excellent, and both are dirt cheap. Seriously, I got both together for $10. So it shouldn't be that hard to track down a copy of either, but if you can only get one, I would suggest the sequel, Custom Robo V2. That said, both are smooth playing, fun, wacky robot battling adventures, and come highly recommended for an import for your N64.